All right, we will continue our media availabilities for today. We are now joined by Kevin Harvick, driver of the number four Bushlight Ford for Stewart Haas Racing. We'll go ahead and open it right up for questions. If you have one, please raise your hand and we'll get to you. We'll start here with Bob. Chris Fox Sports, uh, do you use the simulator anymore for a new track like this uh, to prepare? Yeah, we use it every week, you know, just to try to familiarize yourself and help the guys you know, with their sim stuff and, and try to um, develop and advance the, the simulator. So, um, yeah, so yes, your answer is yes. Um, it really depends on the week. You know, I think um, it's important from a development side more than I would tell you that it's important from my side. Um, but, you know, without the driver's feedback, it's hard to develop it correctly and properly um, you know with the pre and post and all the things that sh that you need to do because as you go forward it just becomes it becomes more important every you know every year in my opinion as as you get less track time and so that the more relevant it is the better off you're going to be we'll go to Jeff they're saying that this track is Phoenix ish New Hampshire ish you've had some mild success at some of those places yeah um, are there things that this track does that fits your style like do you are you optimistic about this track because of those things y you know I think it's it's obviously a flat racetrack um, you know I think as as you look at this particular car it's it's just kind of a crap shoot every week until you have some notes and know what you fight where you're good where you're bad um, you know we were all good at, at Phoenix so you know hopefully some of that carries over this a much I would consider this a much different brace racetrack than Phoenix just because of turns one and two and you know how unique it is with possibly downshifting twice and, and all the things that, that could happen. Um, so there's just, you know, the, the expectations and, and, you know, the things that happen and don't happen. I would have told you that last week was going to be just a horrendous race after Texas and, you know, it winds up being pretty exciting so I, I don't I mean it's it's really hard to tell what's going to happen until you actually just get out there and go no I think it would be way worse if you didn't shift you know I think um, you know I think I ran my first race here in probably 1998 in the truck series and you know we we I remember shifting in the in the Bush series car you know, there's just certain places that, you know, that corner is so tight down there that, that you have to be able to, to have something to get it out of the hole. Otherwise, everybody just stomps the throttle and doesn't go anywhere and because it's not turning any RPM. So, you know, any, any time, I like less rules. <laughs> less rules are better. <laughs> Easier to interpret. We'll go to Tucker, then to Dustin, then back to Bob. Tucker White, li Tucker White last word on Sports Up. Kevin. Two weeks ago, we ran a lackluster all-star race at Texas. Uh, and in light of the uh, success of the uh, clash at the Coliseum, uh, what should be done with the all-star race now? Uh, that's out of my pay grade. Uh, but I can tell you we had a fantastic race last week. So, you know, I think as, as you look at that, we've got, you look at the clash, you've got some pretty good options. So one's, one's uh, a quarter mile in length and in a football stadium, and one's a mile and a half long. and. You know, we've had some other great races as, as we've gone through the season. And, and I think, um, you know, obviously going to different venues and having different things happen. And, um, you know, if it was if it was mine, I would I would do things, uh, you know, probably a different way. But it's not mine. I'm just a, I just drive. So, you know, it's uh, it's like I tell my son, we'll make a couple billion dollars and you can buy it. <laughs> then you can decide what you can you can decide what the schedule looks like. So. Um, you know, I think you have to respect that part of it to, um, you know, to other people's decisions that are running businesses to what they think are appropriate. And, and uh, but we've we've had a lot of good races uh, this year, so you've got options. You'll you'll know where it all stands when you get done with Phoenix and you've run at all the tracks. We'll go to Dustin then to Bob. Dustin Long, NBC Sports. Couple questions. Um, in light of what you've seen at the the mile and a half tracks, some of the successes in terms of the racing compared to last year. Is that enough uh, from a competitor's point of view that it would encourage you to have other people look at, leaders in the sport to consider 
running going back onto the oval at Indianapolis based off of what you've seen at some of the mile and a half, or is that too much apples and oranges and there's too much differences there? Could be the greatest race on earth. Like what's the what's the real ingredient that made Charlotte so much better than Texas? I don't I don't know either. <laughs> I don't think anybody does. You know, so it's it's um you just have to do it. You know, I, I, I think that that would be the, the only way you'd really find out. You know, it's, it's um, I don't know. It, I mean, it's, it's kind of a stumper, you know, to, to try to figure out exactly what the ingredients are that makes a good race or a bad race and what tracks are good and what tracks are bad. I, I don't, I wish somebody could tell me because I, I, I would have bet a million dollars last week that Charlotte was gonna be horrendous. And then all of a sudden we're running up on a part of the racetrack that we've never, we haven't run in five or six years, right? And so I've, I, I've, I've quit trying to guess like what my car is going to drive like, what race is going to be good, what race is going to be bad, because there is no rhyme or reason to it. Um, and I don't think that's by fault. I think that's just because there's just so many, there's just so many new variables that, that, you know, we all just don't completely understand, and, and you're, it's kind of trial and error. And, I mean, you ran a mile and a half track back to back, so I don't know. I, you know, I, I hate driving into the brickyard and driving backwards down the front straightaway and, and running on the road course. You know, I think it's, I think it's, uh, I think it's, <laughs> I think it's terrible, <laughs> you know, for, for our sport and, and almost degrading to a certain degree that you take the, you know, the best racing series in the country and take it to the, you know, what most would consider the greatest, one of the greatest racetracks in the world and race on the road course, so. Hey, I also ask you, um, this week it was announced that Phoenix will be the host for the championship race again in, in 2023, fourth straight year. I know you and some others have talked about moving it around, but do you kind of accept it a a at this point? Um, or, or I guess any f other additional feelings about Phoenix hosting again? No, next it's year? it's kind of like the All Star Race. You know, you have to. There's just so many variables and factors that go into it from a business standpoint and from a, you know, from a, you know, from a um, city standpoint. The you know the crowds have showed up and they've wrapped their arms around it and they're just good at hosting those types of events. So there's just there's way more that goes into it than you know just my opinion on what I would do if I was spitballing things to to try to to try to create something that was exciting. So it's a, you know, it's a, it's a much deeper mix of, of um, things that have to be decided from a business standpoint. And there's just a lot more that goes into it than what I would do just because, you know, it sounds fun. It's just, it's way more uh, in depth than, than that. So, you know, I think it's, a, I think that the races have been, have been good and, you know, the city hosting it has been great and the fans have showed up and that's what we want. We want people to show up and watch this race and that's the most important thing. We'll go back to Bob and then wrap with Lee. Uh, Bob Parker's Fox Sports. I want to say you're 31 points above the playoff cutoff at the moment. I mean, do you look at that stuff a lot now, right now? Does, are you nervous? Do you feel like you have to win? And, or do you, or do you start talking strategy, race strategy as far as like, man, no, I just tell me where I'm at at the end of 26, Bob. If we're in or in, we're out, we're out. You know, we either did good enough or not good enough. That's, I mean, that's really, there's just, there's, I have so much other stuff to think about that, you know, to try to help with the cars and go to different places every week that you can't, can't really count points. Do you think that you would start talking about something? I don't know. I'll tell you in 11 weeks, 12 weeks, whatever it is. We'll take a last question from Lee. After running Sunny in here, Lee. <laughs> I like your hat. I like your hat. Yeah. We'll talk about that. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> um, after, um, now you screwed me up. After running the carousel the last couple of week, the years at Sonoma, they're going back to the chute. Which do you prefer from behind the driver's seat? Yeah, the carousel just didn't work very good for where our cars were in time. You know, um, I ran the carousel back in 1995 in the Southwest Tour car and don't remember it being like it has the, the last couple of years. It almost, it really kind of, the cars didn't go through there very well. Um, it kind of took that turn four to turn seven, you know, passing opportunities away and just kind of slowed the speed down. And I don't know, it just didn't, didn't, didn't feel great with, with our cars. So I think it's a good move 
going back to, to where we were. I think it fits our cars better. And do you guys have any big plans for the off weekend? And how important is it for your guys to have that time to kind of rejuvenate after the year that they've had putting this car together? Yeah. Well, you know, I think it's important. I, I think, you know, for, um, you know, for, for us, um, you know, I think it's just having that early season off week is, is has really been missed this year just because you don't didn't have time to kind of get your thoughts around each other. I, th I thought it would be great to just not have any off weekends, but man, I would... I would retract that after not having the. <laughs> I would retract that statement quickly after after not having that that early, early in the season off weekend. So, um, you know, I think it's it's a good time. I wish they would just shut the shops. I wish it would be mandatory doors locked for a week, like F1. You know, just to just to make sure that those guys don't get overworked. But I know a lot of them will will you know take some time and and uh, hopefully take a week and kind of get rejuvenated and, and go from there. All right, Kevin, thanks for your time. Good luck this weekend.